Hello, in today's video I would like to show you something. Um, so I made this algorithm which is um, SVM, so to support vector machine. I guess you can just Google SVM for people who... It's a machine learning algorithm that allows us to um, separate between uh, two classes. So this is a supervised. We need to we need to uh, have the labels uh, for the training. Um, I followed this tutorial. So this guy used this new Cefrit, just a faster SVM, uh, in an on an Arduino un, uh, Nano. I did it on an Arduino Uno. Um, and he got it from another i think it's this one no I, I don't know where i think it's this one yes so it was developed uh, here mainly in tehran and boston university college so it's just a fast algorithm from this year from a few months ago first SVM. I encourage you to read uh, the paper, I, even though I have to admit that I didn't. Um, so my setup is, as you might see it on the bottom side, I have an Arduino Uno and I just have a simple uh, photoresistor. I think I can turn off the light. A photoresistor and um, connected to the Arduino. So, uh, I copied, so this guy, uh, th thanks to him, because he published, uh, you can find the paper here, the paper, the code, sorry, I'm a bit tired. Um, he did it for multiple, for Python, for a micro Python for um, Arduino and Go, and he did it for multi class. So you can read his article if you want. What he does is that he gets he, this data set and then he gives the labels. Um, so you can have multiple features, uh, for example, an RGB uh, LED. In my case, we only have one feature, uh, which is the value of the photoresistor. I copied this code and I added some, just a bit of mine. So mine was this. Basically what I do is um, I go through 200 iterations with a 10 uh, 100 millisecond uh, delay and the first 100 values I take them as the 0 and the second I take them as a 1 so I, I, I keep the values I put them here and uh, let me remove this so I store them here and then I put the target if it's less than 100, a zero, if it's above, it's a one. And at some point when I reach 100, uh, here I have a five second delay to, to change. So what I do is that I let the light turned on, it gets 100 values, then I have five seconds to turn off the light, it gets 100 values and then if I turn on or turn off the light, we will see it on the serial print. So the, this part is the learning part. So we get the data that we store. We don't even need this line nor this line. Uh, so we, we get the data, we store it. Um, Sorry. Uh, we store it and then we train the algorithm with this fit. Um, 
so I know a bit about SVMs and uh, we will try to find the vector that will maximize the distance between the hyperplane in our case since it's a 1D or 2D problem in our case 1D uh, so it's a line or, or even less uh, it, it's just a point that will maximize the distance between uh, your data points here. We will try to find the vector that will maximize this space. So if we have a line, do we have an example? If, if we have this line, for example, it doesn't maximize because it's closer to this one. This one is closer to this one and the middle one is the best one. So it's an optimization problem. This is what is being done in the fit part. And then uh, we project the, the data on the vector to see if we are on the right or on the left side, on which side we are. So this is a binary classification problem, and that's what the paper does. And this guy uh, did um, one against all uh, classification. I don't know if one against all classification. Okay, wait, we can go one versus rest. We can read about it, but basically we we do uh, binary classifications multiple times. What did I had to change? I had to adapt the number of, so this is, this is uh, your data set. In my case, I knew that I had 100 plus 100 uh, data points. Um, I don't know why do we have to, I just put the same value. Uh, the features, how many inputs do you get per sample? In my case, it's one. So I changed this value to one. And if I had multiple ones, when I would gather the data here, I would have, uh, in target, I would keep it the same. But here I would have zero and then I would have the same line. But uh, here with the second, for example, here if I had, I don't know, a second sensor or whatever, I would put it uh, in, in, the, in the second, third, and that's how I would gather the data. Of course, you can replace this by a, a button, for example. If you click on a button, it stores the, the data points. Uh, I had to change this too, and I think that's it. That's it. Then I had to store the, um, the labels in target. Uh, I had to store the input. I think I did something I shouldn't have done. Yes, uh, the input here. And that's it. Now I will show you how all of this works. So I can upload it. Perfect. And now I can monitor so now it's getting the data points as soon up now I turn off the light you should be able to see it now it's training on the dark side and then if I turn on or turn off the light you should be able to see the the prediction changing so now it's predicting one you can see it here the light is turned off and if I turn on the light it should be, yes, it switches back to zero. And if I, up. Ah. ah, crazy, really crazy how this works incredibly well. So when it's turned off, it's a one. When it's turned on, it's a zero. And if I, Okay, it needs to be really dark for it to work. This is very cool. This is machine learning <laughs> on the edge. Okay, I thought this was uh, interesting. 24 milliseconds for training. So this is very, very short. And this is a, a one-time procedure unless you, you need to 
unless you need to, to, to change the sensor. Ha, huh. okay, 300. Thank you for watching.